الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we begin with the lessons from the life of the father of the prophets Ibrahim عليه السلام Ibrahim عليه السلام was not an Arab but he was born in Babylonia, according to the most famous, uh, the most uh, <coughs> famous opinions of most of the historians and Muslim historians that Ibrahim alayhi salam was born in Babylonia, or otherwise known as the Chaldeans. His father was Tara. His father was also named a nickname which meant the maker or the fashioner of the idols. Ibrahim alayhi salam was born with a brother as well by the name of Haran. It is said that his brother had a son. His name was Lut alayhi salam. So therefore, the majority of historians agree that Ibrahim alayhi salam was the uncle of the second prophet which, who lived in his same time, known to us in the Quran as Lut alayhi salam. His father Tara, as we said, he used to fashion idols, used to make statues of different images, different shapes, different forms. And he made them big, and small in all sizes and he gave them names when people wanted to worship their God they used to use these idols as an intermediary between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep in mind that they all believed in Allah Allah says in the Quran about the people of Quraysh who carried on the worship of idols وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ If you were to ask them, these idol worshippers, who is it that created the skies and the earth? They will respond by saying, it is Allah, one and, the one and only true God, Allah. Sorry if I say the word God sometimes, but I'm referring to the way they, they call Allah, God in English. But really we should use the word Allah because it's a very unique name, which Allah named himself within the Quran. So if you were to ask them who created the skies and the earth, they would say Allah. So the people who worshipped the statues at the time of Ibrahim السلام, also worshipped Allah, one God. However, the way they worshipped him was in the form of shirk through intermediaries. How? They used to make statues that represented certain spiritual things. And each one represented spirituality of a certain power on earth. Storm, rain, sun, moon, creation, birth, anything like that. Love. So they worshipped these different idols. Similar to the Greek theology. They had a god for everything almost. And they named them names. These people worship the idols to bring them closer to God, to Allah. In their opinion, this is how they assumed it to be. And so this is shirk. Some people, brothers and sisters, they don't understand this concept very well. Even among the Muslims. They worship one Allah alone. They seek refuge from Allah alone. However, they have amulets and superstitious beliefs they even have people it could be their imams who have passed away or a prophet or some kind of object or a superstitious belief that their grandparents or grandfather or grandmother taught them 
and they use it to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it. This is, the, this is just like the people who worship the idols. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, uh, when he brings down the argument for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam against the people of Quraysh, what was their reply? They used to say, إِنَّمَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى We are only worshipping them so that they can bring us closer to Allah. But Allah still called it shirk. So their aim and objective was Allah. But how did they do it? They do it through these idols. And this is shirk. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for any intermediaries or intercessors for you to reach him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have told us to do so, but he didn't. Instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us quite the contrary, exactly the contrary, the opposite. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And if my servants ask you about me, they want to get close to me, they, they, they want me, they call out to me, if they ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu who, who is he addressing? He is addressing the, the best of all creation on earth, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah. There is no one, no creation on earth greater than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his degree. Yet Allah is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and if they ask you, O Messenger of God, about me, they want me, then tell them, I am close to them. I will respond to the caller when he calls out to me. So let them obey me and let them believe in me so they may reach success. Rasul did, Allah did not tell him to say to them, if my servants ask you about me, then let them inform you and I'll respond, for example. And this was during his life when he was alive. It is quite strange that we hear of people who call upon the Prophet ﷺ during his death to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an intermediary. I was very shocked. I've never heard this story before, but a friend of mine went to Hajj. But before going to Mecca, he went to Medina. Yesterday he was telling me this story. And he said that he saw people prostrating to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina. I don't know what sect these people are. I don't know what kind of Islam they follow, what kind of brand they made up. And what they responded to him was, I think the Prophet Muhammad that you are talking about is different to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that we are talking about. I don't know what they meant. There's only one Islam, no two or three brands of it. Anyone with a common sense will understand that Allah, the creator of the human beings, knows everything about us and he knows what whispers inside of our hearts. Inside of our conscience, he knows about us things that we don't know about ourselves. So why do we need to call upon prophets and messengers of God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why? So these people worshipped the idols at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. With the same concept. We want to get closer to Allah through these pious men. Maybe Allah will recognize our love for them. But no one asked them to do so. As Yusuf alayhi salam used to say to the people in the prison, his friends in the prison, مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِهِ O oh my friends, whoever you are worshipping other than Allah, مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَّا أَسْمَاءً سَمَّيْتُمُوهَا They are just names which you gave it. أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاؤُكُمْ You and your forefathers, you gave these names. You made it up. It's made up. You made it up. You made this concept up and you made these names up. Allah never... مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ يُسْفَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ says مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانِ Allah has never sent down any type of information like this to you مِنْ سُلْطَانِ of any knowledge there are no sources, no references to it there is no knowledge to it yet the people make it up SubhanAllah, you tell them worship Allah no, we can't see Him, we can't touch Him so what do they do? they have to draw an image of Allah of God, of a God they have to make something which they can touch. 
Ya hasratan ala al-ibad, as the prophets used to say, Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Ma ya'tihim min rasulin illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un. Oh, what great sadness to the servants of, God, of Allah. Any messenger that comes to them with the proper knowledge, they used to mock him. And so, Ibrahim alayhi salam was one of those messengers. Now, I want you to analyze with me here. We sometimes complain about our situation in this world. Can we practice our deen living in the West? All these negative things coming against us. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we will never reach the calamities and tests which the messengers of Allah went through in their trials. Ibrahim alayhi salam was born to non-believing parents. Some people are born to non-believing parents and they convert to Islam. They embrace Islam. They accept Islam. And this is a similar situation. But alhamdulillah, they can find support. They can find other Muslims. They can find other people who have accepted Islam around them. There are millions of them. And this message came to them from people and they had a chance to support it by looking at other people who are knowledgeable and educated. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, no one came to him except for Jibreel alayhi salam. So an unseen being came to Ibrahim alayhi salam telling him about this deen. Not only that, he's telling him you are a messenger of God. You are a messenger of Allah and you have a new message. Well, the message was always there. But what we mean by new message, it means that you are telling the people a message which they have forgotten. And you bring with it new laws. Some, the messengers of Allah, some of them bring new laws, certain new laws. So tell them about the messenger of Allah and you are his messenger. How? What a, what a trial. And the first among the people who he has to inform is the closest one to him, his father and his mother. He wants to save them from the fire. All these years, his mother and father think that they are doing well. They've never done anything wrong. They're worshipping idols, they're going to paradise, they, God loves them, they love God. That's, that's their belief. They had no idea. And then suddenly, their own little son comes up to them, and he was a teenager. And suddenly he says to his father, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, and I'll recite it to you in Surah Maryam. وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ لِمَ تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبْصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيْئًا So we'll stop here and we'll move on inshaAllah as we proceed. Allah says, and relate in the book meaning in the Qur'an, and it is also mentioned in the Bible, in the Torah, and in the Injil, mentioned in the book, Ibrahim. Surely he was a man of truth, a prophet. When he said to his father, O oh my father, why do you worship which that can neither see or hear, nor can it do anything for you? First of all, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who commanded Ibrahim alayhi salam to inform his father. And when he has approached his father, the approach is of the most kindest, most lenient, yet firm at the same time, the most caring and compassionate approach. In the Quran it says, he said, Ya Abati. You can say Abi, or you can say Abati. If you say Abi, it's a form of respect. You say Abati, it's an extra form of respect. It's the full meaning of the word. When you say Dad or Father, you can see that Father has more of a formal approach and a greater meaning. Some people say Pa or Pops or Me Old Man. These are disrespectful ways of calling your father and addressing your mother or father. Ma. Old cheese, some of them say. This is haram, disrespectful. So here in this verse, Ibrahim is teaching us two lessons. Number one, 
approaching your father in a word of advice must be done in the most respectful and careful manner. And secondly, we always address our parents in the proper way. For they are the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought life to you from secondly, in the secondary stage. Allah is the one that commanded it, secondly they came from them. So this is why Allah says in Surah Al-Isra, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Your Lord has commanded that you worship none other but, the, but Him. And immediately after that verse, Allah says, in the same verse, sorry, immediately after those words, Allah says, and to be dutiful towards your parents. It is almost together with the worship of Allah. Obviously, it's separate. You don't worship your parents. But Allah says, immediately after the worship of Allah comes the duty towards your parents. Because Allah created you, and it is through their means that you came about into this life. We must respect them. So then he addresses him by saying, Ya Abati, lima ta'bud? What is the reason that you worship something that cannot hear, cannot see, and cannot do anything for you? These are statues you made with your hands. Now remember, the Quran, the way the verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks them is a summary. It's only a summary of a huge event or a large conversation. So it's a summary. Obviously, Ibrahim salam was going through lots of reasoning and sweet argumentation between him and his father for a long time. And he was a teenager at that time. But the Quran now is summarizing the clucks of the whole argument. So in the first stage, Allah mentions how Ibrahim salam was reasoning with his father. And basically gives you an example of pointing out something that he wants to know from his father. He is asking his father to explain to him something. Oh father, I, what's the reason you worship something that cannot see and cannot hear and cannot benefit you in any way? Meaning I want to learn, tell me, please, teach me if I don't know. And at the same time I don't understand. But at the same time, Ibrahim salam is informing his father about something very important. He's giving him da'wah. He's inviting him. But look at the way he's done it first. He questions, he asks his father in a simple... What does every father want to do for their son or, or daughter? They want to teach them. And the best thing a father would love their son or daughter to do is when they ask him a question. They want to know something. So they come up to you and they say, Dad, Father, why this and why that? We all remember that commercial? Remember about the son in the car with the father? And he says to him, Dad, what does he ask about rabbits? Well, he said, why was the Great Wall of China built? And he said, uh, to keep the rabbits out. Too many rabbits. <laughs> so this is a famous commercial, very hilarious. But it shows you that it's natural that the child asks the father and, or the mother and the parents love, what, when, love it when their children ask them questions. Not when, however, when they cannot answer their question, they get embarrassed. So when he asked the question about the Great Wall of China, the father was embarrassed, so he gave a ridiculous answer. Yet, at the same time, he understands why his son would ask him that. Similarly, Ibrahim salam asked his father, Dad, uh, uh, actually, Father, Ya Abati, Ya Abati, out of respect, I, I don't mean to be rude to you, Father, that's why I'm calling you Abati, see, in a subtle way. Why do you worship something that doesn't hear or, or, or see and doesn't do anything for you? I want to do it, but I, 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 it doesn't make sense to me. His father could not provide him with a proper answer. He could not provide him with a proper answer at all. And this went on for a long time. Some narrations, it is said that his father, Tara, used to say to him things like, Son, these questions should not be asked. These are forbidden questions. You can't ask these questions. It's blasphemy. And he kept asking one time. In one narration, it says that his father slapped him. Saying, don't you dare question like this anymore. So when you are not following truth, you cannot find a truthful answer. But you try to wiggle your way out of it. And if you can't answer it in the end, what happens to some people? They get angry. This is a sign of a person losing an argument when you actually get very angry. And this is a sign of the hypocrites. Subhanallah, how it, it makes sense. Hypocrites are people who show on the outside something, but on the inside... They're actually disbelievers. So they are deceiving you in the truth. 
What is one of the signs of the hypocrites? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that they used to إِذَا خَاصَمَ fajr, When he would argue with you, he'd become immoral. Fajr, he'd burst into, argue, into immoral behavior. He'd swear, he'd shout, because he cannot beat you in the truthful argument. So his father could not answer him. And now he's beginning to get angry. Yet Ibrahim alayhi salam maintained his respectful approach to his father. So listen to what it says after this. Again, the summary of a second stage of the argument. Ya abati. Again, he is addressing him with his full name, his most respectful name. Ya abati inni qad ja'ani min al-ilm ma lam ya'tika fattabi'ni ahdik. فَاتَّبِعْنِي أَهْدِكَ صِرَاطًا سَوِيًّا So now this is the second stage of the argument. Allah summarizes it by saying, O oh my father, I have received such knowledge as has not come to you. So follow me and I will guide you to the straight path. So after a long argumentation about, okay, now we've understood that father, you don't have an answer for this and I can't follow it. I would like to introduce to you something. O oh Father, out of respect, I have received a knowledge from Allah. Follow me. Follow me in a good way. Follow me. Allah has made me a messenger, your son. I will guide you to a straight path. You see, if a father and a son went on camping, and, they, and the father lost his way, and he was meant to be that father who guides his son and looks after him, right, teenage son. And then the father actually lost his way. And now they're going to be in a difficult position. And they're in a danger. And they're going to run out of water and run out of food. And now they're going to survive. And then suddenly, imagine the son, he's watched some documentaries about camping and maps, right? And he's read about it beforehand. His father never knew. Suddenly his son starts bringing out all these ideas which his father never knew before and says to him, Dad, I think if we do this, we can find food. If we do this, we can get our shelter. And if we do that and follow this and follow the son's direction and this and that, then we can make it out of here. If the father is smart and intelligent, he will follow his son's direction because he will realize that his son is talking substance here. There is substance to what he's saying. He's not just blabbering on, right? And he says, son... How did you know this? He'll say to him, Dad, actually, I did a bit of research before I came, and I read this book called How to Survive in the Forest When Lost. The father follows his son. Similarly, Ibrahim السلام, has received this information his father hasn't received, in all true honesty. And he says after the argument, in the second stage, he says, Father, follow me. I can guide you the straight path. After we have now established that these idols are just things that you've carved with your hand. Now here I'd like to stop. There is a narration in the tafsir that Ibrahim alayhi salam at this stage, his father began to sort of come round to his argument. And he said, son, all right, I can't answer you any of the questions you've given me. At least let's benefit something from these idols. Can you take them and sell them for me? So his son went out and he took the idols and began to call out in the market. It says that he began to call out the following words, because you see he's a truthful man, he can't lie. He says, who would like to buy something that cannot benefit and cannot harm? <laughs> sure. Buy something cannot benefit, cannot harm? Why would you want to buy something that has no benefit, you have no need for it, and there's no harm? See, people buy weapons for harm. And they buy shields for protection. Or they buy food to eat. What's this? No benefit, no harm. <laughs> Just buy it. Give me your money and take it. You're not going to get anything out of it. Obviously, no one's going to buy anything. This is bad advertisement. Which gives us an idea about advertisement. right? I had a friend who was a, a successful businessman. He still is. But before Islam, before he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used to do business in the best form, door-to-door -door salesperson. And he used to say to me, I used to look at the item, the product, and I'm not convinced. I'm thinking, how am I going to sell this? I'm not even convinced that it's a good product. And I'm going to ask $500 for it. 
So he said, I'd sit there and I'd speak to myself. I'd convince myself of all the good thing qualities in this product and try to ignore the bad things in the product. And when I convinced myself that the product is worth $500, that's when I went out and sold it. Because now I'm talking with passion. But he's a liar in this sense. Until he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just on that note, Ar Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did forbid us from concealing a defect in any product we sell. You know, some people they say, hey, there's the car. I didn't hide anything. I told him, check it. <laughs> I told him, check, it's not my fault he found the motor that had a big problem in it. But did you know? Yeah, I knew, but I told him, check it. What are, what are you justifying? Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbid us specifically and literally, he said, do not hide the defects of a product. We know the hadith when he was passing by the markets and he found some, a basket of apples, beautiful apples. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, put his hand down beneath the, at the bottom of the basket and he found that the apples underneath were soggy and they were off. So he said, why don't you put the apples on top? And he said it out loud. Everyone can hear him. Calm full. He said, Ya Rasulullah, on their way in the boat, the, 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 the ocean sort of touched them a little bit. So I put them at the bottom. Rasul said, why don't you put them on the top so everyone can see what they're buying? And he said it in open. The man was embarrassed, but he had no right to fool people. So Ibrahim alayhi salam coming back to the story. Who would want to buy, who wants to buy something that cannot benefit or harm? So he came at the end of the day and he had sold no idols, nothing. His father said, son, what'd you do? He said, I went out and I advertised, said, who wants to buy something cannot benefit or harm? He said, son, how can you sell something like that? If you say it cannot benefit or harm. He said, well, father, this is what you're worshipping. And truly, it's never benefited anything or harmed in any way. His father started to become angry at his son. He said, this is the religion of our forefathers. You will stick to it. I'm your dad. You can't tell me what to do. And so arrogance began to develop in the father of Ibrahim. Now, Tara is in English. In Arabic, it's also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called him, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has named him Azar. Azar, as I said before, was the name they used for him because he used to carve out idols. Azar. So then Ibrahim alayhi salam said, now the third stage of the arguments. Summary again. This is after a long time. Allah then says that Ibrahim alayhi salam said the following words. Ya abati la ta'bud shaytan Ya abati la ta'bud shaytan inna shaytan kana lirrahman asiyya Now Ibrahim alayhi salam understands that his father understands everything what he said there's no argument anymore he's just being stubborn his father so now Ibrahim alayhi salam approaches his father because he wants to save him he wants to save him that's the objective he doesn't want to prove himself that he knows more than his father or that his father is stupid or that, you know, he's uh, old school or anything like that. No. He approaches him with all respect, but he needs to save him. So now he approaches him in a different way. Oh, father, do not worship the shaitan. Now, the shaitan has several meanings. Shaitan means the devil, the jinn is created from the fire. Shaitan can also refer to humans who call to evil. They're also referred to as shayateen. Shaytan al-ins of human shaitans. And also shaitan means evil in itself. Everything that represents evil, everything that represents injustice and wrong is also called a shaitan. That's why a jinn who is a great kafir is called a shaitan. Otherwise they're actually jinns. That's what their proper name is. But Allah called them a shaitan, meaning anyone who is incre increases in their kufr, in their disbelief and evil, called a shaitan. So لا تعبد الشيطان Don't worship evil. Don't worship wrong. Don't worship the devil. These idols represent evil and devil. لا تعبد الشيطان إن الشيطان كان للرحمن عصيا Verily, the shaitan, and now is referring to Iblis. The shaitan surely is rebellious to Allah the most gracious. He calls Allah the most merciful. Rahman, addressing his father, telling him who Allah is. He is Ar-Rahman. He'll forgive you, father. 
and the shaitan he disobeyed the Rahman. In other words, Father, at the same time, you are compassionate to me as your son as well. And I am addressing you with respect. And I do not want to disobey you because you are kind to me as well. The one you are worshipping is represents the shaitan and the shaitan disobeyed the Rahman, the kind one. Don't do that, Father. As you are kind to me, don't disobey the one who is kind to both of us, Allah. Because the shaitan was like that, to the kind one, Allah, to the merciful one, Allah. You see the connection? So Allah is summarizing in the most eloquent and fantastic way. Then his father wouldn't listen. Now he's growing in rage more, turning away. Finally, Ibrahim alayhi salam said to him, another summary, Ya abati inni akhafu an yamassaka adhabun min ar-Rahman min ar-Rahman fatakuna lil-shaytan waliya O my father do not worship O my father I fear that a punishment may afflict you from Allah the most merciful and so you become a companion of the shaytan Again, we realize that he never ceases to say, Oh my father, Ya Abati, Ya Abati. Always respecting no matter what. No matter what. And we hear in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he tells us about the treatment of non believing parents, what does he say? And we commanded the human man. To be dutiful towards their father and mother, their parents. His mother carried him agony upon agony and then weaned him and breastfed him for two whole years. Thank me and then thank your parents. To me you shall return. Then Allah says, And if they, your parents, were to do jihad against you, strive and struggle in all their might to make you disbelieve in me or make partners alongside me, do not obey them in that matter, but still maintain your good treatment or good dealings with them during your lifetime. There's no injustice in Islam. So again, ya abati, because we're fearing for our parents. Here now, he's getting desperate, Ibrahim alayhi salam. His father is falling in the fire. He doesn't want to see his father in the fire. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, for those of you here with us who have recently accepted Islam or accepted Islam in the past and your parents are not or they died disbelievers, you can relate to your, yourself with Ibrahim alayhi salam. In the same scenario, I know of many of them who accept Islam and their heart is crying blood for their parents, sincerely. So Ibrahim alayhi salam now is like crying, saying crying blood for his father. Oh my father, he's getting desperate. Do not, I fear that Allah will punish you the most merciful, the most merciful and you'll become the companion of the shaitan. The shaitan did the same thing. He was arrogant father. I'm not calling you arrogant, but I'm telling you shaitan. I'm reminding you that shaitan was like that. Because his father knew the story of the shaitan. And listen again. He's saying the merciful, the merciful will punish you. How can a merciful become punishing to someone when his name is the most merciful? Yes, he is also the punisher. But before that, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Here he's addressing him, ar-Rahman, ar-Rahman will punish you. Meaning... The most merciful will never punish someone unless that person truly, truly deserves it and there is no reason why not to. So, if someone is bad to their mother, do we know of any creature on earth more kinder and compassionate than mother? She will sacrifice her body for you. Isn't that true? She'll sacrifice her body for you. She'll burn herself in your place. The mother. Ummuk. The mother, al um means the one that encompasses. That's why she's called Umm. Yet, 
Can you imagine a mother becoming wrathful towards her son or daughter and wanting them to be punished, to be tortured? No. It's almost impossible. And Allah tells us that He is more merciful than the mother. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi told us this about Allah. So for a, a person to deserve Allah's punishment, he must really deserve it and has gone beyond every bounds. So his father, he's saying to him, I fear that a punishment will fall upon you from the most merciful. And then you'll become a companion of the shaitan. As Allah says in the Quran to Iblis, Idhab, go and try to dis mislead them all. I will put you in hellfire, woman tabi'ak, and everyone who follows you, they'll be with you. Now his father has had enough. And Ibrahim السلام, was about 15, 16, 17 years old at that time, according to some narrations. And he was a teenager. And at this stage, his father had had enough. So now he replies in the opposite. In the end, he said, he, the father, replied, Are you turning from my gods, O Ibrahim? You, are you trying to say they're wrong? Are you turning away from them, putting them down? My gods, surely, if you do not stop what you are doing, I shall stone you. And now, leave me alone for good for a good long time. So if you stay here and you don't go away, I'm going to stone you if you insist on keep going. Now this is after years, years of arguing in a proper way, debating his father, calling his father. Finally his father said to him, I will stone you if you stay any longer. In other words, you're no longer my son. I disown you. He said, either leave my home and you're on your own out there, or I will stone you if you stay. Now some historians tell us that he was even older than that, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Probably over 30 years old. Because his father actually uh, migrated with his mother and his children to uh, Kinaan, somewhere in, in Palestine, and also to Syria. But Ibrahim alayhi salam at this stage, what happened? Once he saw that his father had no more hope in his son, and his son had no more hope in guiding his father, Ibrahim alayhi salam still insisted and resorted to the last words. قال, قال سلام عليك سأستغفر لك ربي إنه كان بي حفيا وأعتزلكم وما تعتدعون من دون الله وأدعو ربي وأدعو ربي عسى ألا أكون بدعاء which means Ibrahim alayhi salam said peace be upon you I will pray to my Lord to forgive you indeed he is to me the most merciful and gracious and I am leaving you and those whom you invoke besides Allah I will invoke my Lord that I may be blessed in my invocation in my dua so even as Ibrahim salam left, he left on good terms, calling to his father to be at peace. And he said, if you're going to leave me, father, then Allah is hafiyya. He will look after me. I'm going with him. And I will make dua to Allah for you. After Ibrahim salam left, it is said that he kept on making dua for his father until his father died. And even after his father's death, he kept making dua for him. Until finally, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a verse down or he commanded Ibrahim alayhi salam that he's not allowed to do that anymore. Ibrahim alayhi salam told his father basically, no more harm will come to you from me. Nor would you face any insults from me. You are safe and far as I am concerned. Instead, you would see good from me. And I will pray for you. That's basically what the words are. And he said, Allah is kind and gentle with me. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him that he is no longer allowed to make istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness for his father, especially after his death. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ اسْتِغْفَارُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لِأَبِيهِ إِلَّا عَمَّ وَعِدَةٍ وَعَدَهَا إِيَّاهُ فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ أَنَّهُ عَدُوٌ لِلَّهِ تَبَرَّأَ مِنْهِ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَأَوَّاهٌ حَلِيمٌ and Abraham's act of seeking forgiveness for his father was nothing but only because of a promise he had made to him. But when it became clear to him that he was an enemy to Allah, meaning his father, he disassociated himself from him. Surely Ibrahim was most tender-hearted, forbearing. In the ayah it says, Inna Ibrahim uh, awahun halim. The word awah, Ibrahim is an awah. It's like you know when you feel sorry for someone or something bad that you've done? Some people, they go like this, they go, oh, oh, when they, when they regret something, oh, like that. Or when they feel sorry for someone, oh, they don't know what to say, right? So Ibrahim salam actually used to do that a lot. He used to feel compassion towards everyone and towards his father, la'awah. When Allah told him you can't do that, he said, oh, my father. Oh well. I wish, I wish, I wish, but what? It's his father's choice. So till the end, our duty towards our parents to the end remains that way. No need for insults, no need for abuse, no need for backbiting, and no need for disrespect. In the hadith which is narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, in Al-Bukhari, he says, Yalqa Ibrahim, the Prophet sallallahu said, Yalqa Ibrahim abahu azara yawm al-qiyam. Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam will meet his father azar on the day of judgment. And he will see his face miserable and full of dust. Ibrahim would say to him, Did I not tell you that you should not disobey me, father? His father would reply to him, Today I shall not disobey you. And Ibrahim would answer to him, O Lord, you promised me that you shall not disgrace me on the day of judgment. So today there is no disgrace greater than the disgrace of being my father away from me. Allah would say that to him, I have forbidden disbelievers to enter the paradise. Then it would be said, O Abraham, what is under your feet? And he then will see only to find a stained sacrifice. It will be taken by its legs and thrown in the hellfire. His father will go into hellfire. Obedience to Allah is not inherited. Religion is not inherited. You cannot say to yourself, for example, I am a Muslim because my father is a Muslim. Or a father says, I should enter paradise if my son enters paradise. This is the belief of the Jews. That you are a Jew because you're born from a Jew, as though it is a particular color, a particular creation by God, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a religion, a way of life. You cannot inherit it. That's why you'll find Jews, some of them don't believe in Allah, they don't believe in believing a God. They're atheists, but they'll still call themselves Jews. And this does not make sense. So we do not inherit. And a person may ask, well, 
Ibrahim alayhi salam is asking for his father and he didn't get responded. But why? You see, the rights of people, Allah will let you decide on, on a day of judgment. If someone wronged you, you can forgive them on a day of judgment. No, no worries. Someone took something from you, you can forgive them. Allah keeps that in your hands. However, the rights of Allah, only Allah has the right to decide on. This is something between Allah and the, and the creation. If Allah wanted, He wouldn't have created Azar. If Allah wanted, He wouldn't have made him His father. So, being a father or son is different to the create, creatures of Allah, to the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each individual will be alone on that day. Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي On that day, every person will run away from their brothers. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And from their mothers and fathers. وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي And from their partners and from their children. لِكُلِّ مِرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ On that day, for every person there will be a circumstance, a matter, that they will be too busy with than to think about their own mother, father, children or partners. So Ibrahim alayhi salam gave up on his father and moved along. He went to a place, actually, before leaving to Syria. He came back to his people to try and call them away from the worship of the idols at the same time as he was giving da'wah to his father. So as we know in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, it says that Ibrahim alayhi salam entered the place of worship where the people were worshipping. And it was a day of celebration. So Ibrahim alayhi salam said to the people, after looking up into the stars, he said, Inni saqim, I am sick. And so they left him inside the worshipping place. Why? Some people in those days, they used to believe that the stars had signs. Astrology. This is still practiced till today. And this is shirk in Islam. Disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you believe in the stars of powers and you can tell the future without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, nadara nadratan fin nujum. Allah says, he took a look at the stars and he said to the people, I am sick. Something's going to happen to me if I don't stay here. So he stayed in there and everybody left. When they closed the doors, Ibrahim alayhi salam looked around and he saw all the statues which they revered and worshipped. And there was a big one, a huge one at the front. The biggest of them all. So he grabbed an axe and he looked at the statues and he grabbed some food and sarcastically, Ibrahim a.s. a teenager, he came up to the statues and he began to put the food in front of them and he said to them, eat. The statues didn't eat. So then Ibrahim a.s. said, مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَنْطِقُونَ What's wrong with you? Can't you speak? And then Ibrahim alayhi salam began to say, it is Allah the one and only, the, cre the creator of the heavens and the earth. There is no God worthy of worship but him. And he grabbed the axe and he began to destroy every idol one by one. You all know the story. When he reached the, large, the largest of them all, he looked at the largest one and he had an idea. Now all of this is done in the form of da'wah. He's calling these people. Now he's a messenger of Allah. And these are his people and he is on a mission as the messenger of Allah. Allah you know, allowed him to do this. You know, we can't go into a church now and break the cross of people. We can't do the same thing. Because the circumstance here is different. This is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... He was on a mission as the messenger to his people. So when he broke the statues, he hung the statue on the neck of the largest one. And he left. In the morning, the people came back and they started to scream and yell. Qalu, as Allah says in the Quran, Man fa'ala Who did this to our statues? Actually, who did this to our gods? Allah. 
now you have to defend your own God? There's a little story about uh, the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu There was a man, I've forgotten his name, he lived in Medina among the Ansar. And he had several children. They all embraced Islam. And their father was very old. He was like over 70 years old. And he used to carry this statue around with him everywhere he went. And his children used to say, Dad, Father, stop worshipping this statue. It can't do anything for you. Look at it. You have to carry it. You have to protect it. You have to clean it. It can't clean you. It can't do this. And their father said, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't know what, what I'm, I'm worshipping the spirit within it and all of that stuff. So one day, now the parents, the father and his children were quite close to each other. So one day his children, they waited for their father to be away. And they went up to his statue and took it. Then they grabbed the statue. Ajallakumullah, may Allah forbid you from uh, dirt and, and filth. They got the feces of, of, of a dog. And they wiped the feces of the dog on this idol of their father. And then they went and, they went and threw it between all the garbage. The Ansar in Medina. When, they, when their father returned, he searched for his statue. He couldn't find it. So he went around in the city, in the suburb. People, ya jama'ah, has anyone seen my God? Anyone seen my God? <laughs> and everyone's saying, we don't know where your God is. So he searched and searched and searched. And his children came up to him and said, Dad, I think we saw it near the junkyard. So he went there and he looked for his God and he found it among the junk and it had dog feces all over it. Their father looked at it and that's when he came to his senses. He said, wow, dog feces on my God and he's also between the rubbish and he couldn't even protect himself from that. He looks at his sons and he said, You've done it to me again, haven't you? And subhanAllah, that was a cause of him embracing Islam as well. I've forgotten his name. Maybe inshallah next week we can get his name. But Ibrahim alayhi salam destroyed these statues and put the, the big one on the big statue. And the people came along. Man fa'ala Who did this to our gods? Oh, we're going to be tortured. <laughs> and these gods couldn't even prevent themselves. Someone called out. There is a fatah. There is a young teenager. يُقَالُ لَهُ Ibrahim. He is called Ibrahim. We used to hear him talking bad about our gods. I bet you it's him. So they went and searched for him and they grabbed him. He said, come here. Came up to them. And they said, قَالُوا يَا Ibrahim, Oh Ibrahim, أَأَنْتَ الَّذِي فَعَلْتَ هَذَا بِآلِهَاتِنَا Is it you who did this to our gods? He looks at them and said, I think it's the big one, big statue that did to it. Look, he's got the axe around his neck. Ask him. He'll tell you. Now the people, dumbfounded, they looked at the big statue, and surely the big statue was still alright, and he had the axe around his neck. So then they looked, and they, Allah says in the Quran, they came back to their senses briefly. They said, uh, you always knew that they can't talk to us. Okay? They can't talk to us. We know this. So then Ibrahim salam said to them, Then why are you worshipping these things that they can't even talk? They couldn't even protect themselves. Now you've come to your senses. Then Allah gives the summary of the argument. They kept going backwards and forward until they started coming to their senses. Some of them were still a bit stubborn. So then Ibrahim salam said, There you go. Woe to you and whatever you worship. What's wrong with you? When he said that to them, they lost it again. He said, what? How dare you say that about our gods? Someone called down and said, burn him. So they grabbed him and they put him in a catapult. And they ordered the people of the city. See, I want to tell you something. You know when someone's patriotic to their country? This is forbidden in Islam. We don't have any patriotism in our, in our deen. What are you patriotic about? Be patriotic and stand up for your flag, whether injustice or injustice, right or wrong. What is that? Right or wrong? Allah wants justice on earth. So then they stood up in the patriotic fashion. Save your gods and burn him. That's it. They won't listen to anything anymore. Dumbfounded, blind, deaf, dumb and, dumb and blind. It says in the hadith that the, all the people of Medina contributed. 
So they started gathering wood until it was the height of three-story buildings. That much for one man. And they lit it up. It says that it was so hot and so big, this fire, that people had to stay a distance of what is almost equivalent to half a kilometer away. It was that hot. And they tied Ibrahim alayhi salam with ropes in his legs and his wrists. They placed him in the catapult and they threw him. On the way, in a split few seconds, yani, as he's flying into the fire, the hadith states that, Sahih hadith, that Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and said, Do you want my help? I can help you. He said, No. Mikael asked, Do you want my help? And he said, No. And when the angels asked him, he said, I have Allah. And there is a dua which Ibrahim alayhi salam said when he was thrown into the fire. He said to the angels, Hasbi Allah wa ni'ma al wakil. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this sahih hadith. It says, Hasbi Allah wa ni'ma al wakil. Qalaha Ibrahim hina ma ulqiya finna. He said, Sufficient enough for me is Allah and what a great one to rely on. He is the best to rely on. Ibrahim said it when he was thrown into the fire. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this. And then Allah said, Ya nar kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O fire, be cool and peaceful on Ibrahim. Next week, insha'Allah, we will continue the remainder of this story and we'll see what happened, insha'Allah, with all the lovely lessons and fantastic eloquence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Thank you for listening. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa akhiru da'wana. أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم